Well, thank you to all who are watching from home. Um, welcome to your Preps Coffee Talk, and we would like to welcome Abigail Steele from Keystone Substance Abuse, who's going to give us some really important information about um, uh, youth trends, uh, including e-cigarettes, alcohol, um, opioid use, marijuana, and different types of things that are affecting our youth today. So we'd like to welcome her. Thank you so much, Abby. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go and jump right into this. We're going to learn about substance abuse and what's trending amongst our youth. Obviously, there's other things trending out there, but we're going to focus on a couple. We're going to focus on alcohol, e-cigs, marijuana, and prescription pills. We're not going to talk about cream today, but that is another one with prescription pills that if we want to, we'll do another one later on. So starting off with alcohol, just a little tiny bit about it. 40% of 9th through 12th graders in South Carolina drank alcohol in the past month. So we do have a high percentage. We want to see that get lower, right? So it is the number one abused substance within this age group. Um, when we're talking about alcohol products, there's a range of different alcohol products that have way more alcohol than you can even think of. So when we're talking about these drinks, they just look fruity. They look like they can just be normal, typical monster or something that you'll see every day that don't really look like they contain alcohol. But when we talk about like a four loco, it has about four shots, equivalent to four shots and a half, to four beers and a half, or four drinks of wine and a half. So when we're talking about one drink, it has equivalent to four and a half other drinks that's really poignant and strong. So one of those drinks, if a youth downs it, it could be very potentially dangerous, especially not knowing what it, contain, what it contains and how much alcohol it contains. So we're talking about these different products. Some of them don't even look like they would contain alcohol. Some of them look like they're just the frozen beverage and then you have to add alcohol later. But <clears throat> it's all about educating um, our people out there that are buying these things and the people that have access to them. So our grocery stores, all of our uh, convenience stores, all of those people who have the access to give it to our youth. We're doing the best we can in Go York County. We are at our lowest percentage for our, our convenience stores selling to our youth, underage youth. So we are very, very grateful that that's low. Go for our law enforcement is doing a really good job with that. One of our major trends that we see sometimes too, it was popular for a little bit, has died down a little bit, but just to be aware of, it's the lean drink or purple drink. <laughs> I don't say it always <laughs> right. Um, so it's lightheadedness, dizziness, anytime you're mixing any cough syrup with alcohol, there are gonna be some major risks involved with that. So when we're talking about Robitussin mixed with Sprite and mixed with your, your favorite type of alcohol or a different type of alcohol, this is where it's really commonly referred to. So anybody ever heard the song, I'm not gonna sing for you, but anybody heard that song, a really popular country rapish song, Riding mm -hmm. on My Tractor, Lean All In My Bladder, Cheating On My Baby, You Can Go and Ask Her. So they actually reference this very popular form of drink, very sly in there. So a lot of people actually sing this song without knowing what it's referencing to as well. So with a lot of our songs that are talking about things that we don't know what it's talking about, this actually has a big drug reference trend inside of it. So that's a little bit of what we're going to talk about with alcohol. We'll talk about some um, ways that they're kind of secret. We'll talk about the cone, the umbrella, all that in a little bit. But let's go into our, our popular in our schools right now, right? Amongst our teens, our elementary schools, not as big, but middle and high school, we're seeing a huge trend with e-cigs and vapes. So when we're talking about e-cigs and vapes, jewels were our most popular. Now it's the Enjoy. So it kind of looks really, really similar, but the biggest thing is it's 99 cents, right? So it's very cheap, very affordable, still a pod-based system. So we also have these other conspicuous ones, ones that are vape pens, ones that kind of look like inhalers. Those aren't the most popular, the jewels the most popular, but these we have seen, right? And we have a couple over there that have been confiscated that you can see and look at and see how it, it's very sly. They can use it and still tuck their vapor or aerosol, what we like to call it underneath and no smell to it. So those are the things that we'll be looking into. When we talk about smoking versus jeweling, it's really important when we're talking to our youth 
to use that specific language. So if I ask somebody who's using a jewel or enjoying any type of e-cigarette, and if I ask them, are you smoking? What do you think they say? No. 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 Are you jeweling? Are you hitting the jewel or are you using an e-cigarette, right? That verbiage, they don't ver they don't kind of make it one, but it is one. You're still smoking, you're still getting that nicotine content, chemicals into your system. It still has that second hand effect, even third hand effect to it. So we're talking about smoking versus drooling. The only really big difference is the chemicals. They're different chemicals, but they still have some similar chemicals and the way we heat it up. Fire opposed to electronic battery or um, yeah, battery kind of operated. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So jewels in specific, since it was very popular, we are gonna talk about the equivalence of nicotine. So one pack has 20 cigarettes, right? And research has actually proven that one pod, one jewel pod, this little tiny prepackaged thing that goes into the jewel is more equivalent to two packs of cigarettes. Mm. So you're getting 40 cigarettes into one little pod. So we've heard some students go through one within a week with friends. We've heard one actually go through one pod a day, two pods a day, oh three pods a day. So it just depends on the youth. But usually these youth are ones not already addicted to traditional cigarettes, but those just experimenting and getting addicted to e-cigarettes. So it's kind of addicting a whole new generation, right? We had those numbers go down, now they're on the rise with nicotine and e-cigarettes. When we talk about different devices, I love this kind of equation here. One pack of cigarettes, it's now two, right? One pack of cigarettes is 20 cigarettes, one dual pod, two packs, one fixed pod, which is another pod-based system, 75 cigarettes. And then if you're talking about the Suron, that's like the Sundrop one, it actually has more equivalent to 90 cigarettes. So pod-based systems, they're already pre-packaged, they already have that nicotine component in them, you just don't know what you're getting, right? Especially if you're getting the ones that you put the nicotine in yourself, those are not regulated. So even if it says zero milligram nicotine, it can have nicotine in them because nobody's testing these products. But the bigger pod-based system you have, the more liquid you have inside of it, the bigger pod-based <laughs> system you have, the more liquid you have inside of it to so the more nicotine content that's going to be in there. Juul is in some trouble, right? North Carolina is one uh, state that's actually sued them. Um, for advertising to youth, for the big problems, or having to put possible detectors in schools, things like that. But it's also with our government, right? They're in big, big um, legal issues. But it's not just Juul. Yeah. There's also other pod-based systems out there that aren't getting the attention Juul's getting, but it needs to be, right? Just because we ban Juul, there's all these other <clears throat> systems that are out there that are 99 cents for our, our students or our youth to get their hands on. So it's really important. This is a great step, but it doesn't alleviate the problem all in all. There are some health impairment trends. So we have nicotine poisoning. We're talking about youth that's never been addicted before, never used nicotine before, going through a pod a day, two packs of cigarettes, that has a big potential for nicotine poisoning. Their systems are not ready to use all this nicotine. And I had one student who's like, oh, those are the symptoms? I had that, that's what that is? Dizziness, right? Not being able to focus a little bit. Uh, you can get unconscious, a bunch of different poisons, uh, sorry, sorry, symptoms that can happen because of this poison, this nicotine poisoning. Just like alcohol poisoning, there are some side effects and it can happen quickly without them even noticing. So nicotine poisoning is a big one. Then we have addiction, which is very sad because we don't have a lot of resources for our youth or people who are addicted to nicotine in general. We have sensation programs, right? But 18 is the age you're supposed to be able to purchase nicotine devices. We're actually trying to bump that up to 21, trying to make a, a big stance there, making that 21 in South Carolina. Other states have already done that and been very successful with their rates. So we wanna bump that up because your, the brain is still developing and we already have that research proven that nicotine affects the growth and functioning of the youth's brain. So if they're using at this young age, we're gonna see that, we're gonna see the repercussions of that in the future, in their future learning experience, their success 
So that's really, really important. And it's, we have a lack of resources for those addicted because we don't have programs for under 18. We just don't. And then we have a lack of programs that allow them to get the help that they need very, very specifically, and a lack of education amongst all of our, pe our peers, community members, parents, on what these devices actually look like. They are fairly new, right? So we don't have all that research that we have with cigarettes, 30 plus years of research with cigarettes. So this is a really, really, really um, concerning thing for us in the public health field. We have popcorn lung as another one. Seizures is another one that's coming up now too. And we actually have explosions as well. So explosions with these pod-based systems, they're made to be already prepackaged. But our youth are putting these liquids into these pods and using them in a way it's not intended to. And it could be not it could malfunction, right? Because it's not getting the juice the way it's supposed to. The vape pens, they've been known to explode in the pocket or while people are using it or in purses, right? If you have something too close to it, that could, it's just like it's an electronic device. They're unpredictable. But how many of you guys have phones? You put it in your mouth? No, no right? You're not supposed to, right? Yeah. So we don't usually put that in our mouths. But if we're talking about an explosion and in our mouths, it can dislocate your jaw. We've had some cases where it's dislocated people's jaws. And you're talking about your major systems. You're talking about your mouth, your teeth, your tongue, right? All these things that you need to eat. <laughs> and that's a major thing um, that we're talking about. It's a major health concern. So when we're talking about the discussion, is it safe, right? Cigarettes, when they first came out, did they say they were yes. safe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> safe, good for you, healthy, great way to relieve stress. So my question for you guys is, is it safe? Are they safe? Not knowing what they can do in the future, not knowing all these things. Right now, our generation or the generation using these substances or this particular substance, they're the guinea pigs of this. So they're the ones that for, in 30 years, they're gonna say, those people got this and this and this and this and this, just like we said, our grandparents might have gotten uh, lung cancer or heart cancer, liver cancer, bladder cancer. It affects all of our organs. Anything you're putting into your system that's not air into your lungs, it's going to have risks. So that's something I want you guys to keep in mind. Is it safe? We've had some parents buy these devices for their youth. We've had some we go into middle schools and they say, I got it for Christmas. It's just that lack, lack of education and knowing what these devices are and what they can potentially do to the youth. So that's really important. Any questions? <coughs> no. Okay, we went kind of fast with that one, but um, e-cigarettes, vapes, we can go into more detail if we need to. So one of our big uh, topics too now is, all right, we have jewels, we have these devices. What about marijuana? If there's marijuana in these devices, right? They have particular vape pens that are marijuana based, right? And then people actually put CBD oil potentially into the device as well. So that's an issue for schools right now. How do we test and make sure, does this vape actually have nicotine? Or does this vape have CBD oil or marijuana-based products? So on a federal level, it's illegal. States get to decide if it's legal or illegal within their states, and it has to go through legalization process. So right now in South Carolina, we do have CBD oil uh, available, but the problem is on a federal level, it's illegal. So that means the FDA is not going in and testing these products to make sure this CBD oil has no THC in it, or this CBD oil doesn't have this. This CBD oil is safe, right? So even though it's legalized in South Carolina, be very, very cautious, especially with working in the school systems, working in a substance abuse agency. If I use a CBD oil, a product that's legal in my state, I can potentially not pass my drug test if I get random drug tests because of this substance. Even though it's legal, not, we have to make those decisions based on uh, who we are and what we're doing. So it is a Schedule One drug, so marijuana on a federal level, there is no accepted currently medical use and there's a high potential for addiction, right? Even in the states, those top states, Colorado, California, they still top three for people going for addiction treatment. Right, so marijuana is still in the top three. Even though it's legal, it still has a high rate for addiction. And it, it's going to affect the brain function, how we act, how we think, and how we behave. So it's really, really important to remember that. 
So when we talk about different products, we have the flowers and the buds of typical plants, we have the concentrates, we have the edibles, we have hemp, and we have CBD oil. So when we talk about CBD oil and hemp, they're supposed to have no THC or low THC. So that THC is a part of the plant that gets a person high, right? Without that portion, you're not getting high. But the problem is with this CBD oil, like we said, it's not regulated. So we have had some places that our patients even go to Vitamin Depot up the road from where we're at, and they do test positive using <coughs> CBD oil. We have places in Charlotte that they'll tell you right, right there, if you take this product, you won't pass a drug test. Nobody's passing these things, but they're, they are honing in, our law enforcement's honing in on testing these products themselves and seeing, hey, if it has any trace of THC, taking it out of their thing. Even the blunt forms, they've taken those out of our uh, systems because you can't distinguish the difference between a CBD blunt and a typical marijuana form. So those, those things are really, really kind of in the gray area of where we're at in our legalization process. So hemp CBD oil, zero to low THC, but they are unregulated. Hemp seeds though, you're pretty safe. The hemp plant should not have any THCs. When it grows to a certain height, has to be an actual female plant, right? To actually become that marijuana plant. Can we grow hemp in South Carolina? Yes. Legally. Yeah, you can actually, mm -hmm. we have some places that grow, or people in our state that grow hemp legally in our state. Hemp is used for a bunch of different things. It can be used for clothing, it can be used for ropes. It's actually very durable, strong fiber. So it's actually very, very useful in our, in our society. But when it gets to this point, this is where we're, we're seeing some concerns, some risks, some consequences of using these products. So edibles, we'll talk about that in a second. It has high THC. Concentrates have high THC. And the marijuana the flower has lower compared to these two, but it's higher than what we've seen before. So before, in the Woodstock era, and I know you talked about Woodstock era, so low, kind of five, 10, maybe 10, but 5% THC, right? Now we can see it anywhere from 30 to 40% THC. We're using the concentrates, or we're using a form called dabbing, even 90% THC. So we have forms of delivering the substance to someone's system that's even greater consequences to someone's body. That type of amount of THC in someone's body is not what we or people are used to seeing back in the day. We have the ability to genetically modify plants. Take this from one plant, this from another, make it stronger, make it more durable, make it more poignant, right? So that's where we're at right now with this product. So anybody recognize this? Yeah, mm -hmm. is he allowed to do this anymore? No, oh, yeah. right? This is actually a drug reference. Dabbing, wow. that form of concentration you're using marijuana, dabbing is that 90% or more form of THC, right? So that's a high hit of THC. So technically he's not allowed to do that anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> you, they can use it in vape pens. Usually it's heated up in a bong form type. There's different little substances. They have different names for all of it. It's a lot to go into, but a lot of it, it's just a very, very dangerous type of using this substance that we have seen in high schools. So being very, very aware of what it looks like, what it could potentially look like. And it has, I don't know if they've been trained yet, but usually SROs are trained to see the symptoms of marijuana use. Usually they're sleepy-ish, right? So that can be kind of tucked under the rug someone who's sleepy compared to somebody who's under the impairment of using marijuana. Um, you can see sometimes the bloodshed, bloodshed, bloodshot eyes, the redness of the eyes. So just being really cautious with some of these symptoms can be uh, fairly similar to other things. So being very, very cautious with that. Edibles, <sighs> edibles. So when we're talking about edibles, they are gearing it towards who? Who loves candy? Who loves gummy bears? Twix, uh, Buddha finger. Where's my favorite one? They, I don't think they have it on here. Kitty cat. But they have a bunch. They just twist it. Um, they pop tarts, right? Pop tarts, popped tarts. Mm -hmm. They have all forms of juicy, sugary things that our youth like that are being put into these dispensaries 
or in the black market for youth or for people to get their hands on. So can we tell a difference between a marijuana infused brownie and a regular old brownie? No, right? That's where they're getting um, some backlash with youth in these states so you're able to do that, right? A kid can't tell the difference between this cookie marijuana, this cookie not marijuana, they're just gonna eat the cookie. So we've had, had some cases in states that are legalizing this uh, marijuana, greater risk for you to get a hold of these products, so they have to be hospitalized. There's no THC overdose, but there is a THC overload. You can have too much THC in your system where you have to be hospitalized and get some hospital attention or medical attention. So when we're talking about these youth, we have an increased youth, increased suicide, increased homicide, and what else do you think we have? Addiction. Increased addiction and car accidents, mm -hmm. right? People don't think about that aspect as well. So what law enforcement's having to do is backtrack and see how we have the breathalyzer for alcohol, what are we gonna have for marijuana? So those are some questions still up in the air of what we're gonna do with this product. So we talk about edibles, one of the major differences is, or major risks, if I eat a cookie, am I going to feel full right away? No, right? Really? It's going to go through the digestive process. All right, I don't feel high at all. What am I going to do? Eat another. eat another cookie. Still don't feel high. What am I going to do? Eat another cookie. So that's where that THC overload can come into play again. So it takes time for your system to digest what you're eating. So this is where edibles can be very dangerous. They're very, very common in gummy bears. Right, just like vodka gummy bears, THC infused gummy bears. Um, so we have had some cases where, where youth have taken gummy bears to school. They like to share. They like to share. Sharing is caring, right? So, and then we've had some cases where that has to be um, dealt with. But they they may or may not know what's in those gummy bears. So slower absorption, higher THC. It's a longer lasting high. Increased anxiety attacks or paranoia with this type of um, taking in of this uh, substance, respiratory insufficiency, marijuana intoxication, possibly leading to death, and some hospital, so hospital, hospital attention might need to be um, into play. So CBD products, we have a bunch of different ones there. We have some on our table you can look at. CBD oil, just putting it out there. You can get CBD oil or CBD products at a CBD store, sometimes they have it at Publix or different places like that. So just knowing, even though it's at a place like Publix or a place that you're used to going, it's like Earth Fair, like a holistic place like Earth Fair, they're still not regulated, right? You still have medications and CVS and Walgreens that are still under clinical testing, right? So being really aware of those products that are out there that aren't completely regulated or through that process. If you are going to use this um, form CBD oil or any form of CBD product, one of the things to look out for is a certificate of analysis, just showing that there is a third party present testing these subjects, these items, these objects, to see if it has exactly what it says it has. It's a little bit of a safer way to check and to make your little checks and balances there. Questions, marijuana, CBD oil? Edibles? No? All right, cool deal. So prescription pills, we'll go through this very quickly as well. Prescription pills, we're in that opioid epidemic right now. So what we see with this is that we have very high rates of people misusing and abusing prescription pills, right? Those are pills that are prescribed to you by a doctor and that can potentially have fentanyl or carfentanyl lace within it if you're getting counterfeit pills. Can we tell the difference between a regular old pill and a counterfeit pill? No, right? There's no way to tell the difference there. But it can potentially have fentanyl, it can potentially have carfentanyl. Fentanyl, this is a lethal dose of fentanyl. It doesn't take much, right? Compared to a lethal dose of heroin and carfentanyl, that's a lethal dose, right? Just that little bit can be fatal to someone's life. When we're talking about carfentanyl, anybody know what carfentanyl is used for? It's actually used to tranquilize elephants, right? Yeah. So we're talking about a big elephant, let's see, a big elephant over here, right? Into a little tiny body like this compared to it, it can have some major effects. So we're talking about morphine. Morphine is a controlled dose of pain pills, right? It is that much stronger than morphine. 
and then fentanyl and heroin, right? So when we do have fentanyl patches, right? Fentanyl that you can get in the doctor, and that's, you and your doctor have to talk about the risks because you can get addicted to those as well, but they are controlled substances. The fentanyl that we're seeing in these counterfeit pills or in, in marijuana, in these substances, they're more from China or from other areas that are just coming into the country that illegally, right? So when we're talking about all these things, there is a safe way to get your morphine and your fentanyl, but being very cautious what's out there. Marijuana could be laced with fentanyl, it could be pill pressed into, um, prescription pills, it can be into anything, right? And we, we've seen that. We have cases in York County where we've had some losses because of that all. So difference between real, fake, really can't tell the difference, just being really cautious, getting it from our pharmacies, that's what they're there for. They're trained to make sure it is not contaminated, trained to make sure it matches what's on the label, what's in the bottle, is specific towards your body type, your weight, what your condition is, right? So not sharing. Can you still get fined without any money distribution if you're giving someone a pill? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right? It's still called distribution. Whether there's money transfer or not, that's still distribution. One of the scariest trends that we have going on or that we've noticed and seen and heard is called Skittles or farm parties. Has anybody ever heard of that before? Mm -hmm. So what this means is we're going into mom and dad's cabinets or grandma's cabinets or wherever we can find pills. It's kind of like your entrance fee into a party. So you're coming into the party, you're bringing your pills. What else is available at parties? What other substance? Alcohol. Usually alcohol. Dangerous, dangerous mix, right? So we have alcohol, we have pills, passing it around. You get a laxative, ha 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 jokes on you, right? But that can be potentially really dangerous. We can have blood thinners, right? We can have heart medications, things like that, that we're mixing with alcohol as well. It's really scary. Some of our youth know, hey, you mix this with this, this is how you're gonna feel, right? Mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy stuff. So it's something to be aware of. We have disposal bags now. We have little bags you can put water, shake it up, and you can put it in your trash can and it dissolves and deactivates the pills. We have drop box locations all throughout our county where you can put all your pills in a little Ziploc bag, drop it off so it's not available in your cabinets, right? So we wanna make sure any unused medications, any expired medications, you're not going down the toilet, you're not going in the trash, you're not staying in our cabinet, so we're getting rid of them so that access isn't there. Have you guys heard drop, drop off day? The DEA is having a national drop off day. So they're having that actually October 26th where you can just bring all your medication. It doesn't even have to be an opioid. Be whatever medication you have that you want to get rid of, and they'll take it and dispose of it properly for you, just so that it's not available for our youth to get into, into their hands on it, right? Or especially if someone's addicted to an opioid, right? And they're everywhere, right? We have a lot of people dealing with this issue. Maid, plumber, someone that's going for an open house, the first thing they're going to check is your medicine cabinet. We have opportunity to get little pill bottles that have blocks, that have passcodes to actually get into it if you have medications. We have little safe locker boxes that look like um, safes that you can put all your pills if you have a lot of them and you have a little key or little codes to get into it just so that it's out of the hands of whoever can be in contact with those medications. So Xanax especially, is alcohol is dangerous. They're two substances with a similar effect, right? So it's a very big depressant. And that can, that can be really, really um, effective when it, you talk about the brain and the body in creating an adverse effect, effect that you do not want. When combined, it can be very, very addictive, right? Just one prescription pill used the wrong way can be addictive to somebody. So being very, very cautious. So people all need to understand that even though it's legal, it's not always safe, right? Even though it's available, even though it's legal for you to use, it's not always safe on your body, knowing the repercussions of what can come out of it, right? We have alcohol. Alcohol is legal. You're allowed to grab it. You're allowed to get it from the store, but with responsibility, right? And that's on each and every one of us that's using it and being very careful with especially these gummy bears, right? Not knowing if it's a kratom gummy bear, if it's a CBD marijuana gummy bear, if it's an alcohol gummy bear, if it's a plain old gummy bear. 
I'll leave you with this fun little fact. So how many of you guys like gummy bears? All right, how many of you guys, if I gave you a gummy bear package, will only eat one gummy bear? <laughs> Just one. <laughs> They're like, no way. Me neither, right? Eat the entire bag, if not the majority of that bag. One gummy bear, on average, if laced with THC, is enough to get four people high. Ooh. So if we're eating an entire bag of gummy bears, we're getting hundreds of people high within our own little body system. So that's where that can be adversely affected. All right, any questions? Thank you guys, appreciate it. Thanks yes. for watching. Thank you, yeah. thank you. All right, so just wanna give you guys a little heads up of what we have going on with our display table. So we have some inconspicuous ways that youth are using or having their alcohol containers. We talk about regular old comb, you can still brush your hair, but it's a, a little conspicuous way to conceal alcohol inside. We talk about your umbrella as well. You can open it up and have your alcohol inside. So these are things that people under 21 can buy that are available um, to be really cautious. <laughs> Nobody I know uses this big of tampon, so if you see something like this, red flag of what's going on with this as well. We talked about we talked about these fruity drinks, um, the four locos, the things that look like energy drinks, the spark, the straw burritas that just look like they don't contain alcohol. Really important to know. And we're talking about a little solo cup. This much is a shot of liquor, not much on a red solo cup. This much is 4.5 ounces of wine, and this is a beer size. So when we see people put drinks of substance into a red solo cup it's not very indicative of how much is in that one drink so being really cautious and they actually line it for you you can see going all the way liquor wine beer so those are actually why those ridges are on a red solo cup we have little blasters so being really cautious if you see little cups like this if they have holes in the middle usually it's for alcohol related purposes we have CBD oil cartilages can be put into a jewel pod so they can have those actually slip right into there and be like their little pod based system. We have marijuana conspicuous things. So this is actually, oops, sorry. This actually has Pringles inside. But what you don't know is that if I have marijuana that I want to put in here, I can actually pop the bottom off, unscrew it and put my marijuana or whatever inside the bottom of that container. Um, we have our jewel devices. We have now our big warnings that are on, um, that are on there. We have our devices, our popular Enjoy jewels. These are our old fashioned ones that used to look just like cigarettes. These are all confiscated devices that we've got from high schools in our county. We like to point out that the vapor that comes out of an e-cigarette is more of a vapor that you would see, or what we like to call aerosol, that you would see come out of a hairspray bottle instead of a water vapor that you would see come out of a water spray can. So we do have some resources. If you guys would like some, we can get them emailed out to you. And then lastly, we have what we call disposal bags. So these disposal bags, what they look like are just little tiny bags. You can add water to them. They have the direction on the back. Fill it, shake it, and it allows you to put your prescription pills into the trash can, deactivating it in the process, allowing for that access to be denied to get those products. So if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to Keystone or to Brooke at uh, York Prep Academy and we can get you the resources you need. Thank you.